Here we'll be looking at some underwater footage taken from a couple of New Zealand sub-Antarctic islands, Auckland Island and Campbell Islands. These are very remote and relatively pristine islands, so this was a really rare opportunity to look at what's living in their marine habitats. The technique we're using is called BRUVS, which stands for Baited Remote Underwater Video, and the way it works is we have a bait, in this case tin tuna, attached to a pole on a frame, attach a video camera to the frame and point it at the bait. We then lower the whole thing down to the seabed and leave it there for about an hour to film anything attracted to the bait. And the advantage of this method is that we can get a good idea of what's living in the area without causing any destruction. We did this at about 40 sites in the sub-Antarctic islands, but this first site we're looking at here is way up the estuary at about 15 metres depth. It's quite dark and silty, basically a soft sediment habitat, but as we move up the estuary, we'll see this changing to clearer water with more light and less sediment. The main fauna we can see are squat lobster, which are crustaceans. They're a benthic species, meaning that they spend most of their time on the seafloor, and are generalist feeders, which means they feed on a variety of food sources, including detritus, and scavenge for whatever organic matter they can find in the sediment. They can occur in quite dense aggregations, and the large numbers we can see here are quite typical of what we saw at many of the sites in the upper zone of the estuary. This next site we're looking at is in the middle zone of the estuary, closer to the ocean. Here the water's clearer and there's more light reaching the bottom, which is allowing a few species of algae to grow. The two very charismatic species we can see jostling for position around the bait are a cod and the giant spider crab. Both of these species were very common in the area, the cod was by far and away the most abundant fish we saw in all our videos, and the spider crab was also pretty widely distributed across the sites. Now it's worth noting that the reason we're using tin tuna for bait is because we're very cautious of introducing foreign pathogens into the ecosystem, which might have occurred if we used frozen pilchards for example. But tin tuna is exposed to high temperatures when it's packed in order to sterilise the meat, so it can be considered relatively safe in this respect. The site we're looking at now is also in the middle zone of the estuary, but it's a slightly different habitat in that the algal cover is less dense and there's fewer spider crabs and no cod. If you look closely though, you'll be able to see some squat lobster jumping up around the bait, particularly as the larger crabs charge in. The white dots you can see buzzing around the water and settling onto the bait are isopods. Often these would come up with the bruvs when we retrieve them, and we've been collecting them and storing them in ethanol to do a genetic connectivity study. This will tell us how connected populations are between sites and even between islands, which is really important for conservation planning. If, for example, populations are very genetically distinct, this would mean that we need to conserve each of them, and therefore a large area, to maintain that genetic diversity. On the other hand, if populations are all strongly connected, then we can afford to conserve less area, with the assumption that if some populations become impacted, those in the protected areas will be able to replenish them. We're now moving to a site near the mouth of the estuary in the outer zone closer to the ocean. Here the influence of the ocean is very strong, so we're receiving a lot more wave energy and physical disturbance that creates bare space. We can see a few species that we hadn't seen at the other sites, mostly echinoderms such as a sea star, and various mollusks crawling along the bedrock grazing down any turfing or microalgae. The last site we're going to look at in the bruv footage is another outer site, but this one's more protected so it supports a dense algal forest. The species with the bulbs is a macrocystis, and these bulbs are filled with gas that hold the algae upright in the water column, which allows it to better compete with other algae for light. The gas filled bulbs also help with dispersal, because fragments that break off float to the surface and can travel long distances. These dense algal forests are obviously highly productive and contribute to a lot of the biomass in the system, but also provide important habitat for a range of animals, including our common species of cod. One of the best things about working in remote, pristine locations like this is chance encounters with amazing creatures, such as the southern right whale which we found cruising along the surface feeding on plankton. Southern right whales are a migrant species that travel all around Antarctica, but are known to frequent Auckland and Campbell Islands during the breeding season in winter and spring. Interestingly, we saw this one in November, which was perhaps the very tail end of that season. Historically, this species was targeted by whalers, almost to the point of extinction, 
but in recent years they've seen a recovery and numbers continue to grow, so hopefully in the future we'll be seeing more of them in these waters.